All right, back with part three. Okay, so here's a second example of sort of the concepts I was talking about. These are the two formulas that we're looking for. And remember, it, it's, it's like this. When you see the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the right, we're basically saying if we can take this formula and change the a to negative 3, yeah, and change that a to negative 3, which, you know, x minus negative 3 is x plus 3. If, if we can... If we can take this function and create 1 over x plus 3, we can take an infinite value and multiply it by a finite value, which ultimately will get us to our final answer. Okay? So the question is, can we, re can we rewrite the bottom where x plus 3 is one of the factors? So the question you got to ask yourself is, can I, off to the side... Successfully factor the polynomial 3x squared plus 8x minus 3. And this maybe is where it'd be helpful to recognize like there are several factoring methods. Remember, AC method said multiply the first and the last, you get negative 9. Which factors of negative 9 adds up to 8? Should be 9 and negative 1. That means we split the middle up into 9x minus 1x. And then you still have 3x squared plus 9x minus 3 here. So then ask yourself, if you group these two together, what do they share? 3x. The leftovers, x plus 3. You group these two together. What do they share? Negative 1. What are the leftovers? x plus 3. So the bottom factor is 3x minus 1 times x plus 3. I'm going to rewrite this. And now I'm going to extract 1 over x plus 3. And I'm going to multiply that by the remaining part of that function. Both taken to that limit, of course. So hopefully you guys, hopefully you guys followed my logic when I, when I literally replace the a with a negative three. I mean, I just show, like it's showing you now that this equals positive infinity. And then it's being multiplied by a constant value. It's being multiplied by 2 times negative 3 minus 5. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Minus 5 is negative 11. So there's the top part of that. The denominator is going to be 3 times negative 3, which is negative 9. Minus 1 is negative 10. So again, a negative divided by a negative is a positive value. So it's basically saying, hey, what's infinity times 11 tenths? It's still positive infinity. All right.
We're bringing back the piecewise. Actually, you know what? I'm, I got a better idea. Let's... Let's start with these. I think this is going to be way better if we uh, start with functions that are given to you as piecewise. Those ones above there, those absolute values, we were going to convert to piecewise, but I think this is going to be better. So if we're given a piecewise function, which in this case... is a quadratic when you are less than four and it's a linear function when you're greater than four. So, I mean, just a rough sketch would be like, eh, something's happened here and then it does this or opposites, you know, like it could be this. Anyway, try to visualize this as one of these functions is coming from the left of four, and one of them is coming from the right of four. So for part A, the limit as x approaches four from the left of this function right here. The less than component is really what's describing the behavior of the function when you are coming from the left. None of this really matters because greater than 4 means right of 4, okay? Less than, of, less than 4 means left of 4. So you are basically going to say, hey, this component represents the left behavior of the function. This component represents the right. Here, this would be better. This is the left. This is the right. So when you're computing part A, you are just using information from the top. Because the top represents the left behavior of the function. And then you ask yourself, where are my domain issues? Nowhere. That means I can plug four straight in. It doesn't matter if it's that little negative there. Doesn't matter. Four can go in for the x here. Four can go in for the x there. 16 minus 20 is negative four. The limit as x approaches four from the left is negative four. So what component of the function do we use when we're approaching from the right? That one. It also happens to be negative 4. So which one do we use when it's just straight up 4 and not from the left or from the right? Oh yeah, yeah, you remember guys now? When you, when you looked at the graph, the limit from the left had to match the limit from the right in order for that limit to even exist. So, the limit as x approaches four only exists if the left limit and the right limit match, which they do. When they match, The limit exists at that point. It equals negative 4, 2. Whew, 
Oh my goodness, I think I'm losing my voice, guys. Mm. All right, let's try this again. Uh, which one of these functions is relaying left behavior to us, left endpoint behavior? Well, Less than four. This is everything from the left. All right. Um, now, sometimes people are like, well, wait a minute. This is one of those fraction ones where we got to divide the top and bottom by the biggest power and do something really time consuming. That's actually not the case here. If it's an infinite limit, that's what you do. Since it's just four, you ask yourself, is there a domain issue with four? No, the domain issue is with negative one. So it, you know, all you gotta do is plug in four. 12 minus one over five, it's 11 fifths. This one's to the right, so it's the limit as x approaches 4 from the right of, it's just 7, it's just a constant. All right, so this is where students can get really confused on, was well, the answer 7? So 4? Is it the 7 times 4? Well, think about what 7 is as a function. 7 is the y value, 7, forever, constant. So it's kind of like uh, you're always 7 no matter what. No matter what the limit is, at least to the right of 4, you're always 7. Now like on the previous example, the limit as x approaches 4 only exists if the limit as x approaches 4 from the left of f of x equals the limit as x approaches 4 from the right of f of x. Well, they don't equal, so it doesn't exist. You can put d and e for does not exist. All right, this is a great one because it forces us to think. If you see it does not equal here, it's really going to mess with your mind. But think about it like this. This means that y equals 3x everywhere. Oh boy, let's just keep away from cursive. Everywhere. Except except that x equals negative 1. So think about what y equals 3x equals. It's a graph of a line that starts at the origin, goes up 1, 2, 3 to the right 1, or down 1, 2, 3 to the left 1. Except this is a spot where it doesn't exist. It's just an open hole. Okay? Oh, but, but at x equals negative 1, y equals 9. Okay? So, I, sorry, I got to stop this video mid-example because there's still, I have like 15-minute max on them all. So we're going to go to video number four now.